All right. Well, we just went and saw Riddick. Just Riddick. No Pitch Black, no The Chronicles of Riddick. Just Riddick. We have dropped The Chronicles of. It seems we've pulled a Rambo to, well, First Blood to Rambo 2 to... Well, if they make a prequel, it'll be Dick Riddick. It'll be Dick Riddick, because he's, yes. Well, I, I think they should have gone to, because Richard, whatever. But yeah, uh, we showed up late. So we Well, we showed up almost precisely on time, just when the movie had started. But so we have no idea what the previews were. Miles lost his keys. This dickhead at the ticket counter carded us for Riddick. Like, we were like... We were, like, 15 years older than he was. Like, seriously? I can show him my gray hairs, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm like, he wasn't old enough to grow what I got. <laughs> I was like, dude, you're not old enough to vote. <laughs> yeah, I got to see your ID. This movie might be too violent for you. <laughs> you need to be accompanied by an adult if you're not over 17. I'll call him my daddy. <laughs> Is he your father? Oh my god. Uh, I'm afraid to talk about what I thought about this movie. I, I don't know I, if I should open with this. I, should I just go or do you want to go? I'll go. Air it out. I love this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I like this movie a lot. It was great. I liked it. Um, it's impossible. Oh, I know, right? No, I'm lying. I have to be lying. No, I love this movie. It was really good. Um, uh, this this movie is, uh, I, it's, it's it's kind of a, it falls into a weird place in the series in that it's, it's a sequel and yet, basically a remake of Pitch Black. If that make it's almost like Evil Dead Two, in that it's a sequel and yet a remake. You know, it, it falls in that weird area. It really is, where like Riddick is on an alien backwater world that's essentially uncharted, and there's weird aliens all over it. And once it gets dark, fucking every alien ever erupts out of the ground and tries to kill them, and they have to cross like 30 miles of alien infested wasteland to get power cells to power the ships and escape it's the same movie yeah but it, I, I, I recognize it more as we have to get our fans back on track after yeah. Chronicles of Riddick but yeah it's but it's, it's the same movie in the same way that like I see it in the same way that Predators is a sequel yeah to Predator and like Highlander 3 is a sequel to Highlander. They're 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 all essentially the same movie. It, like they're they're like okay, the second movie sucked. Let's ver let's veer back on the highway here. We're gonna do the same movie. This is the apology. Like oh, we're so sorry. You want to see this? <laughs> oh yeah. You want to see Riddick? You want to see Riddick be a badass and kill people? Not be Riddick be like a badass and be like Conan. And the thing is, I kind of liked the Chronicles of Riddick, um, but even I'll be the first to admit that it was, in every conceivable way, except for the badass part, completely different than Pitch Black. Well, it was like, you mentioned Conan, but it, it was is. also kind of like Star Wars, and I, I mentioned yeah. that more that it's a more family-oriented adventure film. Yeah. And that one, Riddick is a, a warrior who is yeah. rising up to take his place to crumble the mighty empire. It's cheesy, and it's what what doesn't work about it is it takes it takes this really low level character, and then it throws him into a space epic. It throws him into this galactic scale war, and you're like, what the fuck is Riddick doing here? Like, he's an escaped convict. What the fuck is he doing is, like, the one great hope to fight this war. It makes no sense. It's like if you made Harry Callahan president of the United States. Yeah. <laughs> now, now Conan comes from the same place, and yet the thing is, Conan always, like, Conan was always kind of, like, destined for greatness. When the whole series started, 
it started as an epic. Pitch Black didn't start that way, you know. It was like, you know, the, the, it starts off with the narrator, like, oh, I'll tell you, he tread the, you know, he trod the thrones of man under his sandaled feet, you know. It didn't start off with him, like, just killing tigers and shit, you know. Anyway, um, I kind of liked it, but the thing is, the first 15 minutes of this are kind of like tying up the loose ends, because you can't just have him, like, you can't just have him, like, running around on a planet, like, anyway. <laughs> Let's just not talk about that, all right. They kind of do, though. Because, um, like, at the end of Chronicles of Riddick, he becomes essentially king by his own hand. Because it's Conan. You know? And, like, long story short, he gets bored. Yeah. Which is kind of what happens to Conan, really. He's like, he gets... He becomes king. Yeah, he's like, he becomes king. And then he's like, yeah, I got... I got everything I ever wanted. I got money, and I got power, and I got chicks. Yay. Hooray. Yeah. <sighs> that's it, you know, like... Not even a lesbian hot tub can chew me up. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like, he's, he's got, like, he's got, like, four chicks and big titties on his, on his bed, and he's just looking over there, like... Yeah. He's like, he's like, I've had that for like four years straight, you know. You have ice cream every night for four years. You kind of don't want ice cream anymore. Like, yeah. So like, all he really wants to do is go like try to find his home world. So he goes to Carl Urban, who's not in this movie, but he goes to Carl Urban, and Carl Urban's like, I'm not in this movie. And he's like, I know, I know, but. Carl Urban, you gotta help me find my home world. And Carl Urban's like, okay, but I'm not in this movie. He's like, I know. So he goes... <laughs> so, I don't know why they try to fuck him. But they fuck him. And so they basically leave him for dead on not Furia. They could have just, like, sent him to Furia and be like, fuck off! And he'd be like, oh, thanks a lot. But no, they fuck him just because, fuck him. It's like an offshoot of Klingons. Yeah. I guess just because they're assholes. I guess that's reason enough. <laughs> Carl Urban's a dick. Yeah, well, I mean, if he was in this movie, he'd be an even more massive dick, but, like... like I would have liked a line when he's falling off the cliffs, and like, assholes! <laughs> I think that's a loose end. Maybe, like, if they're planning a sequel, it would have been nice... I, I'm almost, I almost guarantee you, if there's a deleted scene that they tease sequel bait where they're they've, like they've said they wanted to both uh, I, I don't know how you pronounce the director's name Twoey or whatever Twoey Twoey and, and uh, Vin Diesel they said they essentially wanted to finish a trilogy with Riddick not mm -hmm. necessarily counting Chronicles of Riddick but yeah like, but finish out his story so if this was a success or is a success it'll spawn other movies spoilers riddick wins but like it like as as he's the, you got to figure he's got to tie up loose ends here because obviously Carl Urban has to be in a movie at some point so he's got to like you, you got to figure in some deleted scene he's got to be like no I got to kill Carl Urban I got to get him in the next movie and the, and the weird Scarface guy, because they actually, he makes this big point of pointing out, he's like, that dude with the fucked up face, he says that, he's like, that dude with the fucked up face, I'm gonna kill that motherfucker. And like, he never follows up on that, because he always does, he, like, he always follows up with that, but yeah, he's like, I kill that motherfucker. So like, next movie, it's gonna be called, like, Riddick kills that motherfucker with a scarred face, which would be an awesome, it's like Machete, it's like the, the Machete getting, anyway. But yeah, um... It's it's pitch black. No, well, no, but it it goes back to what it knows yes. satisfies the audience, and it, the whole thing is just a giant glory reel of Riddick mm -hmm. doing badass shit and saying badass shit. Yeah, and that's that's it, that's really all you want to see out of Riddick is him murdering motherfuckers, killing shit. You know, like this. If, if there's a weakness to this, it's that he doesn't kill enough people. <laughs> like, re that's really it. Is like, 
I think Pitch Black, in a sense, was even a little better in that sense, where he was, like, he kind of, he, he actually kind of dripped a little more menace, in a sense. Like, there was only a few moments in this where he actually kind of got really close to people and was kind of, like, menacing them up close. Um... Like, the best scene in this movie where he was, like, all chained up and he was, like, telling people exactly how he was going to kill each and every one of them. Like, those are the best scenes where he's, like, just directly threatening them. And, like, they're trying to play like they're not intimidated, even though he's, like, chained hand and foot and mouth. And, like, they're like, ha, ha, ha I'd like to see you try that. And you just know he's going to do it somehow. And then, of course, eventually he's going to do it. Because that's the great thing about Riddick, is, you know, he's, he's like, he's essentially like, I don't want to say Hannibal Lecter, because that's like a completely different style, but like, Hannibal Lecter is that guy who's gonna fucking kill you, and he's gonna, he like, you don't know how, but somehow he's gonna get out, and he's gonna fucking kill you, he's not gonna eat you, but like, you know what I mean, and he's actually, he's got, you know what I mean. So he, he's he's got that style. You you want to see this guy operate, you know. So um, it's and it's also really cool how like he's surrounded by these so-called tough guys, and he just makes them completely collapse. You know, you got these guys who are like basically colonial marines, and he just makes them shit themselves, like all of them. Um, so. You've got these characters, so the very there's a lot of recognizable characters in here. Uh, Dave Batista, who is playing Dave Batista, except he's got some cornrows or whatever. <laughs> he's, got, he's got like um, I don't want to say like not dreads, but like braids, like really long braids. I'm I'm sure there's a name for them, but like <sighs> he's just yeah, he's Dave Batista, and he's just like. Mm. He's called, like, Sanchez or something. Diaz. But, or Diaz. It was Dave Batista. I was like, Batista, go get him. Was like, um, <laughs> and really the main character that stands out is Starbuck. They keep trying to call her uh, uh, Doll. Doll. She's Starbuck. The worst part about this character... I'm sorry, this character sucked. They keep... There's a really uncomfortable vibe to this character, too. Because they establish that she's a lesbian. And then, like, every character talks about how they're going to, like, put their dick in her. And then they keep reminding us over and over and over again about how she's not interested in fucking her. Like, how she, yeah, not interested in fucking him. And, like, I'm like, okay, she's a lesbian. They're pigs. I get it. Move on. You know, it's just kind of... It's kind of weird they obsess over this shit. But, like, it's... It's, it's really distracting, because it's clear really early on that she's getting typecast. No, it's not she's getting typecast. She is typecast. She, <laughs> Oreo is, is, has commandeered Miles' attention. Uh, Katie Sackoff, as if I'm pronouncing her name right, has fallen into a really dangerous area where... She is Starbuck now. Yes? Yeah. She's she plays she plays the she plays the bitch. She plays the super tough punch you in the face bitch. She has not she seriously has not had to change her characterization at all except for the fact that she says that she is a lesbian. <laughs> you know, like she had her mannerisms in no way have shifted in any way except she's like I don't want to fuck you. I fuck chicks. That's it. <laughs> well, it's overcompensation too. If yeah. you look at uh, Pitch Black, you had a strong female lead. Yeah. But it wasn't because she was arm wrestling other guys and getting into giant brawls with people going, "I'm just as strong and as tough as you." She yeah. showed it through her character. Yeah. And through Holt standing up to the people, but not through physical... Well, yeah, she... Sorry, go ahead. No. Uh, in this one, Katie Sackhoff is downright just kicking everyone's ass. She plays... I don't, I don't throw this term around lightly. She plays a bitch. That's her, that's her role, is she's like, she's just mean. 
is like she stomps around and anyone gives her lip, she punches them in the face. That's her, that's her, that's the front she puts on. She, she puts on the front of being a bitch. You know, she's like, don't fuck with me, I'm a bitch. Boom! You know, at, at no, although at no point does her performance put on any kind of, um, put on any kind of hint that there's like a vulnerable side to her or, or anything deeper than that. She's just like, I am a bitch stereotype. Boom. Whereas, whereas in Pitch Black, I'm sorry, uh, Rada Mitchell, I think her name is. Um, you know, it, that, that I thought that performance was so much deeper in the sense that, um, you know, she's a strong female character, but she's not like the commanding officer. She is a subordinate who all of a sudden is thrust into this position of authority, and she has to act very tough because everyone is looking up to her. And everyone thinks she's heroic because she landed this ship, although she tried to kill everyone to save her own ass. So, you know, there was this, she is, she's very self-doubting, but she has to act in authority, you know, so. Very different characters, but you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, uh, Katie Sackhoff, uh, it's, it's, I don't think it's her fault. It's just that I, I think somebody, whoever was casting this, probably Vin Diesel, but like, like, they're like, we need a bitch. Who plays a bitch? Uh, what about that chick from Battlestar? Starbuck? Oh, yeah, she's a huge bitch. Call her. They call Katie Sackhoff. Can you play a bitch? She's like, yeah. Cool. They give her a script, and she's like, oh, this is Starbuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, that was my problem. That was the worst character. No, my worst character. Oh, oh, I know you said no, second worst. Okay, go ahead. Is the kid. Oh. And <laughs> like the moment shit goes down, he's like the character from Highlander the Source, the poofy white haired guy. No. Worse. But he's he's worse. Because he doesn't just mention that off the top when something goes down. Whenever anything goes bump or someone dies or something like that, he just goes completely off the rails. It's with a sign. Stupid religious bullshit. I, I, the angels, they, 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 I hear them. This is truly a sign. We're blessed. And nothing against religion on this one, okay? Uh, but there's, there's about religion and there's being stupid. Like, this guy. People are getting picked off next to him. Like, these monsters are shooting knives through their fucking faces and he's standing there going these are angels this guy is unbelievable you are god big. has sent angels to us if we pray for strength we will surely survive this ordeal i'm like dude and even other characters are looking at this I, I wonder if this guy's a joke like i wonder if this guy was written as a joke because other characters are like shut the fuck up <laughs> i i don't get this guy I, I don't either. I thought he was going to be a, a, a loon that got killed off. Yeah, because you are begging immediately. Like, from the first line this guy utters, you're like, oh, Jesus, he's one of these guys, right? That's, in fact, that's what it, that's, I think that's exactly what I said. I was like, oh, fuck's sake, he's one of these. Because <laughs> you're like, you're like, you're like, I, I think he sees the cloud, and he's like, this is an omen from the Lord. <laughs> Truly, we are blessed. And I'm like, what? I don't know. If it's a storm cloud, you <laughs> tool. I don't know if he was a joke from the writers or what. <laughs> you were like, oh, please, holy Lord, kill him. <laughs> That's the only omen I want is the, the aliens that kill him. And I, I, that character actually starts to fascinate me. Because I'm like, okay... In every other movie ever, this character would die instantly. Because he'd and be it's like, not even a positive... Like, again, in Pitch Black, the character Keith David plays yes. is a religious person, yeah. but he is not an asshole. He's not... <laughs> yeah, and actually, that was one of the rare instances of a very religious man who is not annoying... He's actually very, he, he's, he's supportive. You know, he's a warm, welcoming, fatherly presence. But he's not like, 
he's he's you know the beasts aren't approaching and he's like he's forgive like, them lord and like it's like i know it'll help this prayer <laughs> let's, let's form a circle <laughs> Like, in the morning, he does, you know, he, he does that, you know, he faces Mecca and shit like that, but it's not like, it's not like they're running towards the ship, and he's like, wait, call a prayer, whips out a carpet, he's like, which way is east? You know, like, oh, we're, we're in space, so spatial dimensions are changing at all the time. We have he has to, to rotate the carpet. <laughs> which way is New Mecca? <laughs> no. Well, Keith David is always awesome, but so, but yeah, he found a core of that character where you are not begging every second he speaks for his death. That character is amazing, and of course, he's actually got a Bible strapped to his chest. Did you notice that? Yeah, I did. That's the first thing you see when this character is it. I'm like, oh man, oh please kill him. <sighs> Yeah, he was the most annoying part for me. Yeah, I blo uh, you notice how I blocked him out. <sighs> Cuz he's he he pops up. He's not frequent like you forget about him. Yeah. And then he just shows up. Yeah. I don't know like, like you're just forget Riddick just killed someone badass yeah. like and <laughs> and and you're you're laughing or something like that and he just pops up like and he's like, yeah, yeah, and like he'll kill somebody, and then you'll see the character like cross himself, and he's like, Jesus, prepare his soul for heaven, for he has sinned, and I'm like, ah! <laughs> or like, somebody will be fixing the ship, and he'll like trot down the ramp, and he's like, oh, Lord, guide his hand as he fixes the hyperdrive, and I'm like, ah, fuck him! <sighs> yeah. Other than that, you had, the, you had the bad guy from Bad Boys 2, and you had uh, the, the character... Who plays Johns? He, I don't know who he is, but he he just made me want Jeff Fahey because he's like a hand-me-down Jeff Fahey. <laughs> I, I didn't see that at all. Um, th okay, so some of the worst things about I, I don't want to harp on the worst things because everyone says like okay, like I said I love it, and then I harp on all the worst things. But I do want to pick on a few things. The hover bikes. I laughed my ass off <laughs> on the hover bikes. Okay, I'm going to say some good things about the special effects and some bad things about the special effects. The good things. There are some fantastic special effects in here. Some really great imagery, some great images in this movie, especially near the end when Riddick is fighting the monsters and he is, like, crawling towards the top of that, like, stone plinth or whatever you want to call it. And, like, he like there's this fucking swarm of monsters, like, coming up towards him. And he's got that fucking, like, sword and he's, like, hacking at them and, like, his sword breaks and he's got, like, that nub of a blade and he's, like, hacking at them and that breaks into a club and he's hacking at him with that and he's still climbing up to the top and he's hacking at him. the fucking club breaks and he's punching at him with that and you see the camera pull back and it looks fucking beautiful it's great and i'm like that's really really cool it's it's the thing to praise and i would say it's also something to to forgive is <laughs> it for this kind of movie it's it's a small budget movie mm -hmm. and so the fact that they did so much with it is a good thing. Yeah. But then every once in a while you get something like the hover bikes. There is there, yeah, every once in a while there's an effect that slaps you back to reality. And you're what like, if we get what if we get space Harleys? And then these giant turbine things with these the handlebars that come up here <laughs> and they get in and they're like, we're gonna hunt Riddick. And they get out and you clearly see a person in front of a green screen just going... It's... Well, it's not just in front of a green screen. It's like, okay, they got these space choppers, okay? When it's dark, it's not such a big deal. Because when you got a shitty special effect, you always want it in the dark. It covers the shit. But, uh, like, three quarters of the time, it's in, like, broad daylight. Like, not even broad daylight, like, stark... Tatooine daylight, and so 
these effects look so cheap. It looks like something I would do if it was like, if I was like sitting perfectly still on like the couch in front of a green screen, and then you like, if you, like if I was just doing this, and then you clipped it out, like if you like rotoscoped me, and then you just like put it in front of like a background, and then you were like, like there was like no other effect at all. I'm just like, and, like it's and you like you 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 just like hand animated it, you know, like you just kind of waved it up and down. It was almost like if you had your if you used your hand and you were like woo. It, it looked so bad, and there was, I think there was, like, even a little, spe like, the, the cheesiest, like, sound effect, it was, like, the Jetsons, it was, like, <laughs> so there's, like, three of them, like, bobbing up and down, like a Hanna-Barbera cartoon, like, I almost expected, like, looping backgrounds, it looked so shit, I don't know what it was, uh, other than, like, maybe it was, like, the fact that there wasn't really any wind, like, there was, like, some wind, but, like, you got no sense of movement out of this. I don't know. Well, it was weird seeing the the kind of static bike, but it had the weird tracking shot yeah. through the area, and it just looked completely off. There was no sense of... It, it was really weird how there was no sense of movement or... or You know what it was? It was the fact that there was, like, no sense of propulsion coming from the bike, like, there was no, like, sense of, uh, there was, like, no motor, like, vibration coming from the motor, or, like, like, no haze coming off the, the engine or something like that, it was really, it was really just, like, clip art, you know, moving up and down, there was no, you didn't see anything coming up the back of the fucking engine, you know, it didn't, I don't know, it was, like, it was really, if you saw, like, if you saw how cheese it was when Count Dooku was like riding this fucking bike. This is like a thousand times worse. This was like one of the shittiest special effects I've seen all year. This was so. This ranked up there with like the running effect in Breaking Dawn. This was really bad. Um, and like I said, I pair this up with like the really the beautiful images that I saw like at the end. Like, you know, when he's climbing the cliffs, when he's fighting the aliens, the, the monsters at the end, the animals, whatever. You know, when he's fighting the scorpion thing at the beginning. You know, um, great stuff. But yeah, the visuals, like, 75% good, but those 25%, you're just like, oh, <laughs> wow. This is why you keep things in the dark. That's why Pitch Black was in the dark. So, like, woo. This shoot must have sucked to be on, like, to film this, because, like, through, seriously, like, 80% of this shoot, they were getting pissed on, because the entire time it was dark and they were fighting the monsters, it was raining. That sucks. Like, it, like, night shoots? I'm guessing it was all in the studio, but, like... Can you imagine working on this movie for like three, four weeks, at least, and just getting non-stop pissed on by sprinklers for at least eight hours a day, every day? That sucks. I don't, like, oh my god. That, whoa. This uh, one was nice, uh, I like... It was kind of like a dread from last year. Yes. It's nice to have... Uh, it was a small film, but it's nice to have a movie that's just rated R, has balls to yes. it. Yes. And this one is a nice... It's kind of like the dread of this year, where it's it's a it's a small film, true, but it, it's got balls like other films yes. don't. <laughs> yeah. Someone else reminded me, like, what Wolverine should have been. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wolverine is PG-13. Yeah. Where you have a, a character with a guy with knives for claws in his hands, you should see blood in a movie like that. You should fucking maul people. <laughs> yeah, and this is another example where uh, I, you know, when I said uh, people misuse the term, it's not Shakespeare. Um, you know, I, I say that's not an excuse to explain plot holes. Um, it's not Shakespeare is fine when you're making that kind of film and you do it right. Riddick is an example of a film 
that's done right. It's a genre film that does itself right. Dread, for example. Dread is a violent action movie. It's a comic book movie about a violent street judge, and it it satisfies its subject matter, and it does it perfectly. Riddick is about a violent motherfucker who kills people violently and spews one-liners about how he's going to do it before he does it, and then he does it. Guess what? He fucking nailed that. You know? Fine. Beautiful. I got gore. I got Riddick stabbing people. I don't have any complaints about that. I paid my money. I got what I paid for. Fine. Yeah. You know, they didn't... They didn't... They didn't water it down, and they didn't pussy out. Okay. If, if they'd have PG-13 this, like they have done with so many others, then I'd have been like, this is shit. You know? Then I'd be picking on plot holes, because then they pussied out, and they were like... Then it, they... If, in that case, they'd have been relying on character development, and I'd have been like, really? <laughs> Which they kind of were with Chronicles of Riddick. You know? That's when I say, like, I kind of liked it, but it wasn't nearly as good. It's because all of a sudden we're delving into, like, Riddick's Furian ancestry, and I'm like, oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) You know, uh, what makes Riddick tick, and I'm like, when Riddick is a very simple character, you know, Riddick is a guy you just don't fuck with. He's a murderer, but the thing is, you know, he only, this is going to sound silly again, but the thing is, Riddick only kills people who fuck with him. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't kill people indiscriminately. It's just if you fuck with him. Unfortunately, people fuck with him. Because they don't know any better. That's the funny part, is when people are downright antagonizing and there's another guy next to him going, Dude, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> and they're like, Oh, what's he gonna do? Big bad Riddick. <laughs> so that's, I mean, that's the movie. It's like... As long as you don't pussy it out, fine. Done. You know, so that's great. Few complaints about the plot, though, if I'm going to nitpick. And again, these are nitpicks. <laughs> the power cells. To stop... Okay, Riddick is stuck on this planet. So he basically, he's like, I got to... Uh, I gotta activate an emergency beacon. So he basically draws bounty hunters to him to essentially steal their ships and get off planet. So he makes them a deal, or at least he extorts them a deal. So, like, two ships come down and he writes them a message. He's like, okay, leave me a ship. You guys get on one ship and leave, and I won't kill everybody. And, of course, that deal's not very good. So they... They they decide to hunt him down, and to keep him from stealing a ship, they each pull a power node out of each one of their ships and put it in the locker, and they lock the locker. With an explosive mine, which seems stupid as all shit, but whatever. Seems now, like overkill, really. No, not whatever. That's fucking stupid. Well, I said that's overkill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, buy my, I buy my lock from my locker. It's a, it's a claymore. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> what what do you normally keep in your locker that's worth putting a claymore on the front? <laughs> he brought it with him. <laughs> anyway, what the first thing that I have a problem with <laughs> is that these two ships have two different power cells. Okay, no problem. Here's the problem, though, is that these two power cells are completely incompatible to the point where if you even try hooking them up, the ships will explode. And the, the guys try to explain, like, if you're even, like, one milliampere off, the hyperdrive will explode. I'm like, wow! The future is that inconvenient that, like, if you even try to hook up, like, this one, like, this one power cell, and you, wow, no, like, if you don't get, if, if you don't get a Duralast battery, it's fucking over. You also don't want to... See, the uh, power is very finicky. You don't want to run the microwave all in hyperdrive because no. the drain on it could do no. this or that. Don't run the, don't run the hair dryer. <laughs> <laughs> no. So they're like, well, why can't, we, why can't we run your battery on this? He's like, no, you can't. I got a Mac. You got a PC. It ain't going to work. And they're like, fuck! 
fucking Riddick! You know, like, <laughs> like this is bullshit. I was like, just needed to be the explanation. Yeah, they needed an explanation, but <laughs> no, I'm like, no, the explanation is just this. Look, you want to see Riddick kill people? <laughs> yeah, like, look, you want to see Riddick? Kill? Like, I was like, this is such horse shit. But whatever. That, that's kind of the explanation. Is like whatever. The second one is Riddick steals the fuel, the power nodes, and so he uses this to like, he's like, give me a ship and I'll give you your power nodes, and so I'm like, okay. So he hides the power nodes. My pro again, my problem is, why do you have to hide them so fucking far away? He hides them like three miles away. Why? <laughs> problem number two. Why did he have to bury him five feet deep? The fuck is your problem, man? <laughs> it takes him like two hours to dig him out. Not a good idea when you he knows... He fucking knows that there's, like, an army of fucking scorpion beasts that are, like, seven feet... Like, no, like, 13 feet long coming to kill their... Oh, I'll bury him eight feet deep. This is a good idea. I got no problem with this. We got one fucking shovel. One. Yeah. Good job, Riddick. This seems like a brilliant idea. Uh, I can't make it too easy for him. It's a good thing he remembered... <laughs> Where he buried Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, that's why he picked a landmark. <laughs> no, you can't. They brought no spares. Yeah, mm. that's the other thing. Is it? No. Don't, don't you have a node that goes bad every once in a while? No. Like, uh, transfer no. it out. No, 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 no. If it, if one burns out, just boo. Well, especially like, if one burns out, the ship will explode. Because that throws off the entire power imbalance, wouldn't it? It's so like... Yeah, that... That, by far, if we're talking plot holes, is bullshit. <laughs> that, you know, I really think if there was a rewrite, they really needed to, like, come up with some other way to, like... To, they needed to come up with something. Like, I don't have a problem with them, like, coming up with something. Like, maybe, like, he steals the dilithium crystals or something like that? Like, okay... Fine, but like these two, like oh shit! No, you've got like you've got double A's and I got D cells. Like this won't work. <laughs> or like like oh, we need jumper cables and he stole the <laughs> jumper cables. You don't have a spare? No. It's the little things, really. See, we're ru we're running the we're running the spare already. We were gonna go to the Seven Eleven, but we got the B. Like what the fuck is the matter with you? Like. Well, we didn't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay? Like, that would have been a good exchange, but no, they're just like, it won't work. Why? This is the future. Nothing works in the future. <laughs> right? <laughs> Nothing is convenient. Dave <laughs> Batista, come on, man. I don't know. I don't know how this shit works. I just plug in my iPod charger and then, don't do that! We're charging the fucking ship! The hyperdrive will blow! Maybe we can pay for power! <laughs> <laughs> no spares. Like, the whole ship, they pull one note out, the whole ship powers down. What if somebody pulled the fucker by accident? Like, somebody spills a coffee, like, ah! Oh. <laughs> God damn, ships are easy to sabotage in the future. What if some guy goes postal and boo? Well, that's it. Fuck. The monsters, by the way, and I'm not saying they ripped this off. I'm not saying that. But the monsters in this movie, um, if you ever played Dead Space, you know those creatures that kind of crawl and they have the big scorpion tails? They look like that. They're scary. Those were the hardest monsters to me, was those fuckers. I hated those things. But that's what they look like, is those big scorpion things. But yeah, the two strongest moments, it's its really the middle act, I think, that drags for me, is the beginning and the end is really, for me, the, the best parts. Um, I also thought that uh, if, there's a, if there's a really weak motivation, it's Boss Johns, who's like, I want to talk to Riddick, I want to know why my son is dead. It's like, like, Riddick really seems resistant to just telling him the truth. Like, maybe there's this whole thing, like, oh, he wouldn't believe me if I told him, but, like, just tell him. 
It's like not like it's gonna harm anything. Like, okay, he's not gonna believe you. So tell him. He's like, yeah, your son got eaten by bats. That's it. Yep. Oh. Yep. <laughs> you didn't kill him? It was bats. I wish I, like, seriously, like, I, I wish I had, but it was bats. Big fuck-off bats. Space bats. It was space bats. The ship crashed and there was space bats. You don't buy that? No, watch well, tough shit. It was bats. <laughs> what? I, and then, and then... There was an army of these assholes, and Carl Urban was there, and then I, I beat up the guy, and he could teleport, and I stabbed him in the head, and then I became their leader, and I led their army for like ten years, and then I got tired of it, and I was having like five ways with these big titty chicks, and then I, I left, and they tried to kill me, and that's how I ended up here. So yeah. It was bats. <laughs> what? So yeah, it sounded better. <laughs> just tell him the truth. <laughs> what about that is far fetched? I don't know. He he chose his own way, and it worked for him. Yeah, right? yeah. The, his own way was just like I'm gonna go balls deep on Starbuck over there. And then I'm gonna kill that motherfucker with a machete. Like, <laughs> that's helping. Good one, Riddick. That directly threatening them with machetes. That's that's way better than the space bats plan. <laughs> I like the space bat plan better. Let's get on the like, let's get on the motorcycles <laughs> and ride like this. <laughs> It's, it seems awfully familiar with the space bats. <laughs> Get on our earthworm gym cycle. <laughs> I don't know. I think we're done here. <laughs> That's it. Nah, I love this movie. So yeah, I'd I'd watch it if you if okay. Let me qualify this. If you like Pitch Black, watch this movie. If you like Riddick, watch. This movie. If you like Riddick, watch this movie. If you thought Pitch Black was fucking stupid. You'll hate this movie. Because it's the same movie. <laughs> no, it's it's a good. I mean, it's 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 a good follow up to Pitch Black. I mean, it, it takes it takes the series, if you want to call it a series, back to its roots. I mean, it, it the Chronicles of Riddick veered way off course. This brings it back, and that's pretty much the story of this movie. Um, <laughs> it's it's worth seeing, honestly, for the hover bikes. <laughs> oh yeah. And to see what happens to Dave Batista. And if you're gonna perv out, you get to see Starbucks boob. Side boob. No, you see boob. You see Starbucks boob. A boob. You see a Starbuck. You see you see a uh, you see a boob. That's I, what they could afford in the contract. I don't know why, like on it like I am <laughs> trying again, I'm trying not trying to be piggish here, but like to me, that's like showing a nut. <laughs> like, like, if that's in my contract, I'll just be like... You want how much for both titties? Yeah, like, Damn, yeah. can we cut that in half and just get one? That's like, <laughs> I don't know, to me that's like showing half my dick. Like, like I'll just show you my whole dick. Like, I don't know, if you're in for, like, if you're in for one boob, you're in for both. I don't know, like, I don't quite get that. Like... Like, oh no, they saw, like, one boob is okay, two, oh, that's a crowd, that's over the line. No, 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 they can only see one. I, I don't know. They, why am I bartering with boobs here? I, like, I'm not, like, ah, fuck it. <laughs> She's a prude. Show your tits. Come on, Katie. Fucking, fucking prude. I just don't get, like, I wonder if that was a bone of contention. Like if that was like no, it was like there was like a con I, I'm just I'm just wondering what the conversation was if that was like if that was in the conversation like it was like oh, Miss Sackhoff uh, in the contract will only show one titty in this movie 
Um, she objects to showing two of her titties, and she insists on only one. Unless you increase her bonus in this movie to X amount of dollars for both titties. Um, each titty will be worth <laughs> X amount of dollars. Like, and then Vin Diesel is like, no, I'll only pay this much for each titty. And then, like, they drew the line, and then, well, like... they're talking discussion about what the, They're just like, ah... Uh, I tell you what, we'll make our hover bikes a little bit shitty for one tip. Yeah, yeah, they had to, they had to slice, they had shave to, off. They had to, they had to make budget cuts to afford the one titty, and then like, <laughs> they're like, okay, we can afford the one titty. All right, and they, we have we have to okay, we got to shoot it a certain way to see the one titty. But like, okay, <laughs> if you can't cut me more. We need the cameo by Carl Urban. It's either Carl Urban or the second. We gotta tip. have we gotta have Carl Urban. <laughs> we, we gotta have Carl Urban. <laughs> well, they had a like. Well, they front loaded the titties at the beginning because they had like those four chicks topless. Just so you know, Carl Urban worth one titty. <laughs> <laughs> if it's either Carl Urban or the extra titty, they made the right choice, in my opinion. You may disagree, but had this had had this featured both titties, this would have been a five star movie. That's all I'm saying. The the potential was wasted here, much like Scarlett Johansson in the island, because legend has it that Scarlett Johansson was actually lobbying to have her titties shown in the island, and then Michael Bay for some reason. Declined. What the fuck is the matter with you? I don't know. And now none of us will know. Because See, at least in Two Guns, Paula Patton offered, and the director said, Sure. Yeah. But now Scarlett Johansson's titties are lost in the mists of time. At least for the time being, not to be seen. Oh well. A toast to titties shrouded in mist. I just like saying titties. Until next time. Titties. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>